This is the first lecture over chapter four, the chapter that deals with triads in first inversion from Miguel Roig Francoli's Harmony in Context. I'd like to start by posing the question about what the purpose of first inversion chords might be in a musical excerpt. And the answer is given in a very succinct form in your textbook. Uh, right at the beginning of chapter four, the book says that the use of first inversion chords allows for richer harmony, more varied voice leading, and more melodic bass lines. And I would also add to that that it allows for progressions that sound less like cadences. So let's go over that again. Richer harmony, more varied voice leading, a more melodic bass line, and a sound which is less like a repeated authentic cadence. Let's take a look at an example from the textbook. This is the first example from chapter four. the point with regard to the last few measures of this piece that the use of first inversions allows the bass line to smooth out a little bit. Uh, here in measures 13 through 14, instead of leaping down from E flat to B flat for a 4 to root position 1, we go to the 1 6 chord with the bass, the D, much closer to the E flat. Then with the motion from 5 6 to 1, we're able to get a strong feeling of dominant to tonic with the leading tone in the bass resolving up by half step to do. And we don't get that cadential sound of a perfect authentic cadence or an imperfect authentic cadence because of the inversion in the bass. We're saving the sound of the perfect authentic cadence for the end of the progression where we have the root position five, seven going to the root position one. Let's take a look at another example. This is one that I created myself. Okay, here we have a similar progression on the top line to the progression on the bottom line. The progression on the top line has only root position one, four, and five chords. Let me play this for you. This does not feature particularly rich harmony. As of right now, we're still restricted to only three triads, the primary triads, and in a major key, all of these are major triads. So the only harmony that we're hearing in this piece is root position major triads. The voice leading in this passage is also uh, not particularly varied. Because of the need to avoid parallel fifths and octaves and to feature contrary motion and so on, uh, in some places there are uh, repetitions of chord progressions that make the example a little bit more tedious than it needs to be. For example, the very first progression going from one to four is exactly duplicated three beats later, uh, the progression from one to four. The progression from four to five although it's not literally the same each time, tends to be very similar. Four to five, the upper voices are going down. Here's another four to five with the upper voices going down, only now the F sharp to E is in the soprano. And then finally at the end, we have the same soprano that we had in measure one, four to five. The only difference here is that this is in open position. So the voice leading in those three examples of four to five works out to be exactly the same. Um, also, the bass line is the kind of bass line that we've been seeing up until now, but it's really melodically fairly unsatisfactory. Listen just to the bass line. This cadence at the end doesn't sound particularly special because we've heard a number of root position five to ones 
earlier in the piece. Uh, we have a 5 to 1 in measure 1, we have a 5 to 1 in measure 2, and then again we have it at the end. And notice how disjunct the bass is. Uh, basses are used to singing this type of disjunct line, but it would be nice to be able to create a more melodic bass line. Now by contrast, let's look at the lower progression. The soprano line is not the same in this progression. I, I couldn't simply take the same soprano line and slap a new bass line on it because of potential voice leading problems. But you can see that the Roman numeral harmonies are the same from the top line to the bottom line. And let's now listen to what this sounds like. As I'm playing this, I'm noticing that I made a, a mistake with the last chord. Can you see what it is? Aha, the last chord does not have a, a third in it. So when I played it, I turned this A into a C sharp using method number three to go from five to one, just as I did above. So playing through this example, we see that it indeed does have richer harmony the distinction in sound between a first inversion triad and a root position triad is quite distinct. There's also more varied voice leading. Instead of being restricted to the same sort of voice leading when going from four to five, I was able to change that up and have a four six to five in measure one, and then a four six to five six in measure two, saving the root position 4 to 5 for measure 3. Also, the bass line now is much more melodic. It still is perhaps a little bit more disjunct than any of the other lines. There's a little bit more leaping motion than there is stepwise motion, and there are fewer repeated notes. But the bass line now features a lot more thirds and a lot more steps than it did in the first four measures. now at the end that that cadence sounds much more effective. Now the root position 4 going to root position 5 going to root position 1 sounds pretty special because we haven't had exactly the same progression in the earlier measures. I saved the root position 5 going to root position 1 for the end. These progressions before the cadence feature a 5 chord going to a 1-6 and a 5-6 going to a 1. So that's a short explanation of some of the advantages of using first inversion triads. In the next lectures, we'll cover voice leading, and we will look at some examples of figured bass and also of melody harmonization. Thanks.